Good day everyone, this is Dr. Eric Batikan and uh, um, we have a very very special guest for today and this is the first time that I'll be uh, featuring a guest. Uh, so talagang pinakauna ito na pumayag na uh, lumabas sa YouTube channel ko and, and I'm so happy that she's here visiting me again after a very very long time and sharing to you some of her experiences and her struggles also and at the end I hope uh, sa lahat ng makakapanood nito uh, makakuha kayo ng mga tips and also you can, uh, she can share uh, some insights especially when you talk about mental health so uh, please welcome Jam Magno <laughs> Hi, Hi. Please say hello. Hello everyone! Welcome to the channel of Doc Batikan. So my name is Jam Magda. I'm from Butuan City and I'm here after uh, two years. Um, I first came here because I was diagnosed with uh, bipolar and I was I used to be so depressed. And now I'm back here to check up with Doc Batikan because um, I went through another phase of uh, mental health issues that I want to be able to address and talk about with Dr. Patika and so now I'm here. And so Jam, uh, can you tell us uh, your entire journey uh, and comparing yourself the first time that you came here as a clinic and now that you're back? Uh, I came here in uh, December of 2017. It was literally a day after I wanted to commit suicide. That was the last time I thought about committing suicide and actually wanting to get through with it. I remember it so vividly because I that was the last time I thought about suicide, but also the first time that I accepted that I actually needed help. And that's why I came here. All those that was three years ago now actually. And um, the difference between then and now is that now I have a son. I'm a single mother. But it was during this whole time of being under your treatment that I decided all these wonderful things that have happened in my life. So these are the things that I decided for myself. Um, I also learned that mental health really is one of the most important things that one should think about. Not just now for the pandemic, but even before. Um, in order for us to be better people, we need to also think about how well we are mentally. And um, the difference between then and now is that now everything is so clear. Um, everything is uh, is normal, especially when it comes to uh, mental health. That's why I've become a mental health advocate. It's because I want to be able to help other people because I know that we all have mental health issues and because it's such a taboo, nobody talks about it. And when you go to a psychologist, automatically, you're crazy. It's not. It's not the issue. If you're watching this and you believe that your friends or your family can no longer help you, you should really seek professional help because that was one of the best, most incredible decisions I've ever made was to actually seek professional help and not judge myself for being crazy but to really acknowledge that problems like this do happen to no matter who you are, rich or poor, with family, without family, with friends, without friends, we all need somebody to talk to that is not somebody who knows us personally. But of course, it's a, it's a journey. So the difference between then and now is that I've become better. Um, as what Doc Patikan says, uh, the problems I do have now is not as bad as it was before. And I know that personally. Um, I have no longer thought about suicide since then. I fully embrace that my life is valuable that um, of course as a mother I have to be an example to my son and that's one of the main reasons why I want to talk about mental health is because as a single parent and as a mother at that I am also you know worried about postpartum depression and getting it because I'm the only person that my son can count on aside from the staff that we do have at home but of course because I am his sole legal guardian I have to make sure that I'm mentally capacitated to be a mom and nobody actually prepares you for it but I feel now that because I dealt with my mental health issues and continue to deal with my mental health issues I become a better mom so I get to compartmentalize as what Doc Batikan has taught me so well actually is to compartmentalize many things in my life and, and to really deal with the internal struggles that I do have in order for me to become a better parent very miss you <laughs> <laughs> And so far, um, ano yung mga changes sa life mo that now that you become a mother, uh, um, I know it's a lot of uh, ano bang mga, ano mga 
surprisingly I've become very less uh, the very first thing that really changed is that I really 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 stopped caring about what other people thought of me I really just only have an audience of two people God and my son so that's really what changed for me there is no audience there is only my son because what matters most is that I raise somebody who is better than me that I am contributing to a better world by raising a better man so instead of complaining about so many things that don't make sense of the many things that people are usually cynical about I really stopped being that and focused on the things I can change and can control so that is myself and raising my son so these are these are the things that that one thing that really changed dramatically for me is that how I'm able to deal with so many things now more logically um, more I think I've now come to a level of calm I know it's it may sound um, weird if you know me personally I there is no calm within me because I am a very outgoing person but I think when I became a mom um, things just really focused for me and there has there is perspective and drive and purpose because uh, my son struggled when he was born and I didn't think that he was gonna survive it and, and neither would I had it happened but what I feel now is that we are now living with a purpose and that is one of the most important things that um, that I think changed within me when I became a mom because um, I, I get to focus on something I get to I finally have dreams I, uh, um, I, I hope this is relatable no but uh, when I was single I, I didn't live for anybody but now that I'm a mom, I'm living for my son. I finally am able to have dreams, not just for us, but for me. I finally have dreams. I finally have career goals. I finally have business goals. And I finally get to do the things that I want to do without the fear of being judged. Because for me, the only audience and the only person to judge me is either God or my son. So I think these are, these are things that really changed within me when I became a parent. So I hope it's the same for other people. <laughs> wow. Uh, Jam, uh, I'd like to ask you this question, uh, especially uh, sa mga interested for those mm. who are undergoing some crisis mm -hmm. or those who have been uh, dealing with some mental health issues. How do you deal with stress, anxiety, and mood problem? Ah, I block it out. <laughs> I, I block, I, I think I've become the CEO of blocking people out. Um, the first time I came here, that was one of the things you taught me, was um, to compartmentalize within myself and my brain those things that made me feel inadequate and, and uh, those negative thoughts and those things that really affected my peace and my, and, and my mental health in general. So I automatically, when something is negative, and as long as it is negative in the sense that it will you know, um, disturb my peace, I block it out regardless you can be family you can be friends you can be an acquaintance you can be somebody random if I feel that you are disturbing my peace you gotta go and um, these I've, be, I've built on that uh, sometimes they say or sometimes I realize it might be because of the trauma uh, the, the withdrawal part of withdrawing from something but what I also think of that is it has built within me the character of knowing that I'm not you know trying to propagate perfection but I'm just saying that when when I am peaceful I become more effective as a person with my goals with the things I want to do especially since I'm really into public service I want to help people regardless of an office I want to be able to serve other people and continually do it and continually be an example for other people as well as my son so it's very important that I really focus on that so one of the things that I learned is, yes, again, I block people out. Number two, when it gets too much, I'm honest. When it is too much, I am honest and I demand for rest. I get professional help, number three. Um, it really, I've, I honestly, I'm going through a lot of trauma right now. In the last few months of this pandemic, on top of the pandemic, I went through a lot of stress and trauma. And uh, one of the things that I really had to face was despite all of the trauma that I felt, I had to seek help. I had to come back here. I had to face it. 
I needed time to rest and think and accept that anxiety has gotten the best of me. And it doesn't make me any less of a mother. It doesn't make me less of a friend or a public servant. It only, it only reinforces the idea that in order for me to be more effective, in order for me to be more helpful to other people, I need to take care of me. Nobody shares from an empty cup. You shouldn't share from an empty cup. So you need to be happy. You need to, be, to feel love within yourself and from other people. And always choose the company that you keep always hang out with like-minded people with people who are kind to themselves and to others always um practice self-care as well and then always make sure that you are able to communicate what you need with the people around you because if you can't be honest to the people around you about your mental health about what you need and about stress and all these things you're never going to be able to find um peace you're never going to be able to heal from anything that breaks or hurts you. So uh, with anybody, if you're watching this and you are not okay, remember that it's okay to not be okay. It's okay to communicate. It's okay. What's not okay though is ranting too much and not actually doing anything about it. I don't advocate for ranting. I'm I'm totally against because I rather that I would always be pretty and I would always be positive and I would always just bring good vibes to other people. So if you are a fan of ranting, why don't you see somebody like Dr. Batikan and rant to him in order so that you don't share your negativity with other people. You don't affect other people negativity. So negatively. So one of the things that I want to advocate for is to really seek professional help. If you, you think you are affected by your mood swings or you have mood swings that you cannot explain, again, breathe. It's so mundane. It's so basic, but it's very effective. Um, it's okay to walk away from certain things that don't help you. Uh, it's okay to walk away from situations where you feel that you're being attacked, you are being, uh, you're being abused, you're being stepped on, you're being hurt. It's okay. It's okay to save yourself. As, as for me, I, I walked away. I left my comfort, what seemed like my comfort zone. I left it and I stood on my own and became fiercely independent. Maybe it's a trauma coping mechanism. Maybe it isn't. But for me, it's what helped me because I, I acknowledge that I'm not okay. I accepted that I need help and I went to get help so that I am able to go back to the life where I am in the service of my own, my own uh, with my staff, with my circle, with my son, and most especially the people that uh, depend on me. So. Um, Jan, how important is moral support or social support in the treatment of those people facing uh, difficulties or with uh, mental health issues? Uh, integral, most important. Because number one, when you have a friend that you know is going through treatment, don't think they're crazy. Don't. One thing I, I learned though is uh, to be an effective friend, don't tell them that they are wrong. Don't make them feel that their mental health issues are easy. They never are. One of the hardest things to deal with is my own brain. And I don't need somebody telling me that, oh, because you're so stubborn. Oh, because you're this and that. You're not a doctor. You're not a psychologist. You don't, as a friend, you're supposed to be the kind of friend that says, you know what? You need to get help. Go get it. You need money for your treatment. Here you go. You need a ride to your treatment. Here you go. Do you need somebody to buy you food when you're done with treatment? Here you go. Do you need a play? Do you need a person to deal with all of the things like booking a hotel or or um, just the logistics of your treatment? There you go. That's the kind of friend or support that we all need. Personally, that's one of the things I'm most grateful for because I didn't have family dealing with with you know part A of my treatment and part B of my treatment. Back then it was just me, and until now it's just me. I left my son with very capable people and friends back home and that was the only thing that ever worried me. And for right now, I got a ride from very good friends that wanted to help me. They, they brought me here. They, they helped me book a, a, good and, and a good hotel. They, you know, they just let me be. Because one of the things that I want to also tell people, don't hover. 
don't hover on people that are going on treatment. Don't keep on asking if they're okay. They will share if they want to. But if they don't want to, because one of the things I learned during my treatment is the only time I want to be alone. It's the only time I want to be alone. It's the only, I'm a very sociable person. I'm a very, I thrive on social things and social events and, and, and social settings. But when I'm under treatment and I'm here, I want to be alone. And I just want to be able to leave and get my treatment here and go back home and be welcomed with the kind of support that I'm already getting and I'm already so grateful for. So it's really very important. So if you have a friend or a family member or if you know of somebody who's going through treatment, just be that kind of person for them. And it would really, really help. So, yeah. Uh, Jam, how do you see yourself like five years from now? Wow. Um, <laughs> uh, two. I would probably be, I would probably be the youngest. Am I allowed to even say this? I'm probably going to be one of the youngest ever female, one of the first female counselors of Batuan City. I know that's kind of a big thing to say right now because I'm not even, but probably in five years, I'd probably be a really good and well-recognized public servant in Mindanao. That's a dream that I will finally put into words. I'd probably be that. But regardless, I'd still be Jal Magdo. I'd still be the head of Team Wai Reclamo. And in five years, I would probably have a six-year-old son and he will probably go to school and we would probably relocate in Domagueta City if I am not able to be in Botuan anymore. So that's what I would be in five years. I'd be happily single with a son. I probably still have thriving businesses. I probably would have able to have my staff graduate from college and get their college degrees. I would have probably built myself my own house. I would have probably given my primary caregiver her own house and I would probably have helped close to about 30 to 40,000 people by just relentlessly doing public service without any exchange and even without an honorable attached to my name. So I think that's that's what I'll be in five years. Yes. If you can give um, a message to your old self. Thank God you didn't kill yourself. Thank God that you had somebody save you. Thank God that you only had the perfect plan, but you were so bad at executing it. Thank God that you did not kill yourself the day before the event because you thought about the event more than yourself. Thank God that you always thought of other people before yourself when it came to things like this. Thank God that you never pushed for bad relationships. Thank God for not focusing on your in your inability to be in a relationship with a man and accepting that this isn't a bad thing. Thank God that romance isn't everything for you anymore. Thank God that you did not listen to people who were supposed to save you when they insult you. Thank God that you saved yourself. And thank God for deciding that being a single mother is single-handedly the thing that made you want to live life better. And thank God that you did not listen to anybody tell you otherwise that being a single mother is a disgrace because it isn't. And thank God that you are empowered by your own faith and by building your faith in the Lord because that's the best thing that that ever happened to you aside from the skincare that you chose to use. But again, thank God that you loved yourself more than anything. And, and um, thank God you, you're still here. So I, I think that's, um, that's one of the... One of the things that I love about my, my younger self is that she fought. She right. fought hard enough, so we're still here. <laughs> <laughs> and we're going to thrive forever and ever. Final message to those people who are struggling right now and probably watching this video. Uh, I always say this, laban lang. Laban lang. In every sense of and form of the word fight harder you are your worst enemy but again you are also the only person who can love yourself fiercely so I know it's a struggle I know it's kind of confusing but the concept is very simple fight fight for yourself fight for that one single person like in my in in, in my case it's my son 
laban lang laban for the things that you want to do with your life it can and it will always happen if you work hard hard work is always going to be part and parcel of your fight life is not ever going to be perfect it's going to be a lot of hard work and a lot of sacrifices and you're going to face a lot more problems but the most important thing is if you thrive and strive with your number one with your um belief in a higher being you can believe in god or you don't it's completely up to you but if you learn how to pray prayer helps but besides prayer because prayer alone in in this case if you have mental health issues go seek help go seek help go find somebody that understands you in, without even meeting them prior to that first meeting because that's how i feel here with doc batikan he's never met me we've never crossed paths before he was recommended to me by a boss who also lives here in davao city and that's what happened and i feel now that he is closer to me than most of my family members because he completely understands and completely made sense of all of the things that that goes on in my head so if you are not okay right now look at me i am an example of a survivor I survived suicide because I said no because I believed even in the last bit of, of um, hopelessness I still believe that I am worth something and now two years later I am one of probably I think that I am probably the most valuable person in my son's life and I am not wrong so again your problems they have solutions and if you can't find it yourself please seek someone who can find the solution with you it's okay to ask for help well said thank you very much jam say bye bye bye, bye. <laughs>